Okay, to start with this method, the first step is we're going to put on some sandstone. Sandstone texture is manufactured by Foafx, and we're going to be rolling it on in this case. And it comes pretty thick. It's meant you can trowel it, you can roll it, you can brush it. But the first thing I'm going to do, and what I've done here, is mixed about 20% water. So you can just take it out of the bucket into a new bucket. It gives you a little more room. Throw some water in there and then drill it, and you'll get this nice, thinner consistency that you can pick up with a roller. So I'm just going to load up my tray and then we'll start rolling out our finish. Okay, so I've got my sandstone in this tray. I'm using a 3 8 inch nap roller and it takes a second to get the sandstone loaded on there but it'll pick it up and then you're ready to go. Now, you know, this represents my wall. I've got it taped off. So in a real working environment, I just take a chip brush and like paint, just paint in all my edges and then I can start rolling. Sandstone, when you want it down, it's like a paint but it's got like this kind of aggregate to it. And what's nice about it is it works as a really good basis for doing like kind of rustic organic trout finishes because that ag aggregate's gonna prevent me from being able to trout anything consistently over the wall. So it's a good place to start. Now when I roll this on, because I'm doing something organic, I wanna keep all my tracks vertical. I don't wanna go randomly around because in nature a lot of things erode vertically. And I don't wanna start in the same place every time because this aggregate where the first place the roller hits the wall it's going to go on the thickest so if I'm consistently hitting the same spot as I work across my space I'm going to get like this heavy area and then light areas so you want to randomly kind of hop around your wall surface so you have thick and thin areas just nice and randomly around the wall so we'll just cover the whole surface with one good coat of this so you want full coverage Okay, for rolling sandstone, I get about 180 square feet per gallon. Okay, before I start rolling on my Grosseza XT, I've got my first coat of sandstone on, and you, now it's dry, and that aggregate's kind of sharp, and it's got a lot of peaks on it, so I need to knock some of those down, and as opposed to sanding with sandpaper, I'm just going to use a trowel and just kind of run over the surface and knock all that stuff off. Okay, for this step, what I'm going to use is Perfetto's Grosseza XT. Great product, it's a plaster product, you can brush it, you can trowel it, and what it does is it cracks on its own even without a size medium under it. If you put a size medium under it, it'll crack even bigger. But it's kind of cool because it totally diffuses your method of application. If I brush it, you can't tell what I use because it's got this nice little porcelain crack that kind of goes all over it. Works really well. All right, so when I'm troweling this stuff, I've just got the right edge of my blade loaded, uh, not super heavy, and I'm just going to go to the top to bottom and the sandstone will automatically grab it and create these kind of organic pits for me. So I'm not going to try and get like smart and try and do something contrived and stupid. I'm going to let it kind of work for me. So that way I can just kind of fly through my finish. Okay, for this kind of coverage with the Grosseza XT, I got about 75 square feet a gallon. Okay, so the Grosseza XT has dried, and so I get all this nice little porcelain fracture just created some more interest for me. And uh, the next step of this is kind of like the bloodbath step. We got this uh, really rich glaze we're going to put all over this and make a total mess of it. It's going to be 12 ounces of full body glazing medium from Proceed, and we're going to mix that with two tablespoons of French red aqua color. So that's going to be the glaze I'm going to make. I don't need to sand this because we're going to keep going over it with more texture soon, so I don't need to waste the time. But since there is texture on here and I want to put my color on, a lot of times I'll just uh, spray down the surface with water so when I'm spreading my glaze over the texture, it just kind of gets into those cracks and crevices a little easier. All right? So I'll get started with that. Okay. So I'm just squirting down the surface with water. And I'm going to want this glaze to really start running down everywhere and just make a total mess so I can't really overdo this.
Okay, so now my surface is hit with water, so I'm going to get my glaze ready. Okay, so this is the red color. Okay, so this is going to look pretty hideous. So I'm just going to kind of start firing this on the wall and make it a mess. Just kind of bouncing around. I definitely want heavier areas and lighter areas. Okay, so now I got my glaze around. I'm just going to start squirting it with water. Kind of creating these channels where it's just going to start leaking down. And that's this is kind of a hands off effect because I'm not going to use a rag or anything. I'm just going to let it drip down on its own. And to create more interest as it's dripping down, I can also take a couple isopropyl alcohol and when I hit that water, react to it and it's going to start creating even more of this like, kind of weird leaching effect. So uh, definitely prep your room for this one because you can have quite a mess at the floorboard. All right. And just keep going until you get like all these kind of like really heavy spots of red to really light spots of red. Okay, so this is still moving and uh, it's going to keep moving for a while. So. Um, it looks like a hideous mess, but tomorrow we'll start doing some funner stuff with it and uh, kind of make it start to look like an old organic, completely falling apart wall. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just randomly throw on some water-based size. Any water-based size will work, but uh, I'm just going to do it kind of erratically, probably to like 30-40% of the surface. And then we're going to throw on some more Grossesa XT. And wherever I put this size, it's going to cause it to expand and fracture a lot more. And in some cases, it'll even fall off the wall. So just like real haphazardly, just kind of throw this around. Okay, so now I've got my Grosses XT again, and we're going to start kind of tapping this in and trailing it real random. And we'll leave some some bigger holes to expose this red under plaster. And then. Uh, We'll do one more layer of plaster and what we're doing right now is just kind of building up uh, more and more layers of plaster and then we'll stain those but just like they've broken away and they're exposing this kind of interesting red texture underneath. So to do that, you know, I've got a lot of texture in here that's going to automatically kind of grab it in a random fashion. But if I just come in from different angles, I'll start to create these, these holes and I can kind of shape them any way I want. Another thing I can do is just tap the plaster up on my trowel and just, you know, I always stay kind of vertical when I'm doing this. Just kind of tap it in some areas and then I can come and kind of knock it down. And it's gonna create these real random holes and voids. And then in some areas, like if I really like, like this, uh, you know, I can leave like a large section of it exposed, so I'll do that in a few areas too. So now I'll just start trailing this up. Okay, so I've got about 70-80% coverage. I've got like real random movement, random troweling. I've got a lot of the red still exposed. So next we'll come in with another layer of plaster and start to close it down just a little bit more. And with this, I'm getting roughly uh, about 80 square feet a gallon. Okay, next we're gonna try out some more plaster and I'm gonna use Fotex from Fofex and Hawk and Trowel. And what I'm gonna do is just start laying this in. I wanna leave some of these red areas exposed and some of my Grossesa XT where it's got this nice cracked look, I'm gonna leave that too. And this is supposed to kind of represent the, what would be the top layer of plaster that started to decay. So I'll kind of work it up onto the edges of my Grossesa so it'll be kind of layered, you know, you'll have your Fotex 
Then around a broken area, you'll have your grossesa, and then you'll have your red underplaster. And then once we're done with that, we'll start staining and antiquing it. So I'm gonna trowel probably 80% of this surface with the Fotex and cover up a lot of what we already did. So when I'm troweling this, like parts of it, I will actually like kind of um, just apply like a normal skip trowel. But then other areas, you know, I'll kind of like maybe around a void or a hole I want to keep, I kind of tap in the plaster and kind of start creating this beat up like really holy like organic effect. Okay, depending on whether or not I've thinned my Fotex, which I usually do 10, 20, even 30 percent, it's pretty thick material. I'm going to get about roughly 60, 70 square feet of gallon doing this. I'm putting it on pretty thick and you can see I covered a ton of my surface area. I've just got like a little bit of red exposure and then next we're going to stain it. But what's going to happen is that Grosset XT is going to accept the stain different than the Fotex and so forth. So it's going to kind of give it a lot more dimension. That's why we went to the trouble to do it. Okay, so now that my Fotex is dry, I need to sand this so I can glaze it. And uh, what you'll notice too, if you come in close here. Okay, so you can see where the size on the Grosseza is cracked even underneath the Fotex right here. So what I can do is go ahead and just take a putty knife and chisel that stuff off where it's gonna break off. And I get these really cool organic looking holes in my finish. So I'll go around and do that and then I'll, I'll proceed to just sand the whole thing. Okay, so now I'm ready to glaze and the first thing I'm gonna do to help my glaze slip across the surface because it's got a lot of texture on it is just take some water and just mist the whole thing. It's really going to help my glaze slide across the surface. Okay, so now that my wall is misted in the area I'm going to work, um, I'm going to take my first glaze, which is going to be 12 ounces of Proceed Full Body Glazing Medium to 6 teaspoons of Earth Brown Aqua Color. And I've got it loaded in a tray. And I'm just going to randomly just start throwing this on the wall. And you want to stay really random with this finish because the whole concept is that it's totally like distressed, organic and natural. So you're not going to want to stay consistent with your colors in any certain area. It just gives it a much better effect. Okay, now for my second color, I'm doing 12 ounces of full body glazing medium by Proceed to six teaspoons of dark brown aqua color. And I'm gonna kinda put this one in all the areas. I didn't put the first one. Okay, so now I need to get my glaze on 100% coverage and I'm going to kind of blend it together and get it to cover everything with just using, like you can use a large wallpaper brush or a large chip brush, just something that will help you spread it a little easier. And I'm just going to fly over the surface and kind of blend these colors somewhat together and just make sure I cover all my plaster. If I'm having trouble doing that, it's just not pushing around well, then you just mist it with a little more water. Okay, so now I'm just going to take some shop towel and I'm just going to create some highs and lows. So I'm going to go in and just randomly pull back some areas, maybe about like 50%. Okay, now I'm going to take, I have a squirt bottle with water and then I've got just a tub of isopropyl alcohol. 
And I'll start with the alcohol. I'm just gonna go and start embedding this. Just kind of flicking it all over the surface. You can see what this isopropyl is doing. It's creating these water spots and just adding a lot of interest to the finish. All right, now I'm gonna take my squirt bottle and just start creating these dripping areas. So I kind of hold it in one place where I see a collection of glaze and just kind of give it a lot of water so it'll just create this running drip effect. Now I'll go in where I've created my drips and hit them again with alcohol and it really kind of makes these drip marks a lot more interesting because water and alcohol don't like each other so they kind of resist and make this really cool movement. Okay, finally, I'm just gonna come in and kind of clean this up, do some composition work and uh, some blending. First thing I'm gonna look for with my shop towel is anywhere where I still see a brush stroke, which does not look organic. Um, I'm gonna go and just lightly kind of tap that off and just kind of refine it, blend it a little bit. Okay, and I can also come in and we're, I've got this isopropyl alcohol on there. You can see this is what it looked like, but if I hit it with shop towel, it pulls the glaze off and shows this kind of frozen, embedded kind of glaze look. Okay, I've got my composition the way I want it. I'm liking the look of it. And uh, one last thing I'll usually do when I'm doing this finish, just because it is supposed to be so distressed and rustic, is I'll take something like a dark brown aqua color, and I'll take it straight out of the bottle, and just a chip brush, and I'll just streak it in all my corners, all my wall joints, just to look like this uh, dirty, like crusty, old room. Kind of really gives it a lot of character.